Today we're going to talk about disjoint or disconnected subsets. This is the situation where persons or items or radars are not directly comparable with each other across the whole data set. It's an awkward situation and we don't want it to happen, but if there hasn't been a little thought put into planning the experimental design or the judging plan in advance, it can happen and then we end up with examining measures that cannot be directly compared or rate of severities that cannot be directly compared or item difficulties or whatever. Let's see how this works. What we'd like is everything to be in one frame of reference. That means every measure, every difficulty for every item and every ability for every student can be directly compared. So in this, the simplest case, if the California students perform better than the New York students, well, we know they did better on the test. There's no question about it. The two sets of students are directly comparable. We can think of the simplest case, which is everybody responds to every item. But if there's missing data, things are still comparable until we get to a more complicated situation. And here is an example of that situation. Here we can see that the California students have responded to the California items and the New York students have responded to the New York items. What if the California students have higher scores? What does that mean? Does it mean the California students are more able or the California items were easier? These data can't tell us. We could do some things to get around this problem. For instance, we could include some of the same items in both tests. Those would be common items or linking items. Or we could look at the content of the items and we could do what's called virtual equating, which is to look for similar items on both tests and match them up. Or we can make some sort of assumption about the students. If we had reason to believe that the two sets of students were equally able on average, we could do a group equating of the two sets of students. But somehow or another, we're going to have to get around this problem that we cannot directly compare the California students and the New York students and the California items and the New York items directly using just only these data. Now, wind steps and facets both detect this type of situation. Here we can see an example in wind steps. There's an example data set called examsubs.txt in the wind steps examples folder. And it illustrates there are several ways in which data can become disconnected. We've been looking at subset type. B in this, on this slide, which is where the persons and the items respond to different subsets, are in different subsets. There's also the, what's called Gutman subsets. This is where, as in subset type A here, and if we look at subset one and two, we can see in the little picture that the two people in subset one succeed on items on which the two people in subset two fail. There's never a situation where a person in subset two succeeds where a person in subset one fails. In other words, there's a split in the data between the high performers and the low performers, and these data cannot tell us how far apart the two different groups are. We need someone to succeed and someone to fail in both subsets and another person to fail and 
another person to succeed on the same items we're talking about in order to connect up the subsets. And then down at the bottom, where the red arrow is, there's an even more complicated situation which neither windsteps nor facets reports directly, but which is usually obvious when you start looking at the output in that there are people who responded in only the low categories of the items and other people who responded in only the high categories and there was no overlap between the two. So we get a split in the data and a gap. And usually the gap is fairly obvious in the output. It's a rare situation, but it is something we just have to bear in mind when we see there is a large space on the item map. It could well be due to this problem. The, the difference between the two, in all these cases, wind steps and facets always reports numbers. The problem is the numbers aren't comparable. How do we get around this problem? One method is to use dummy data. We add additional persons or items or radars to the data set. We give them very small weight and we use them to connect up the real data. Now let's suppose that we have two subsets, persons and items in each one, and we're using wind steps. And we want to say that the two sets of items are equally difficult on average. Then what we do is we introduce into the data set two dummy people who respond to every item. One person responds 010101 to all the items. The other person responds 101010 to all the items. So every item now has a success and a failure and an additional score of one out of two. This ties all the items together and so also ties all the people together. So we add these two extra response strings at the end of the data file. And we also give these two dummy persons very small weight. And we do this with P weight so that they have very little influence on any of these statistics, but they do have the effect of aligning the two frames of reference. So now all the person measures and all the item measures are directly comparable. On the other hand, we could say that it's not the two sets of items that have the same mean difficulty, but the two sets of persons that have the same mean ability. In this case, we want to do the same thing but by adding two dummy items. Now, it's not that easy to add two columns of items in a WinSteps data file, so we might well use the ed file, the edit data file command, which enables us to enter extra responses for each person and each item, in this case, the dummy persons, and we would again add 010101 down a column, and in the next column, 1010, so that every now every person has an extra score of one out of two. But we weight the items very small using I weight, so those two extra responses for each person do not influence the person measures in a way that's going to distort them, but does put all the persons and so all the items in the same frame of reference. Here is a situation with facets. We can see what's happened here. Everybody's taking the same test items, so that's good. But the California students are rated by rate of one and the New York students are rated by rate of two. So now, if the California students do better than the New York students, they have higher scores. Is it because the California students are more able or is it because the California rater, rater one, is more lenient? 
We just don't know from these data. We may be able to make assumptions about this. For instance, we may assume that the raters are equally lenient or the average abilities of the two sets of students are the same. And we can tell facets to impose those assumptions. And it would be better, obviously, if we could arrange for rater one and rater two to rate the same students. And this is often done using video. So rater one and rater two would both look at the videos of the same students or the same student uh, report sheet or something else, and then rate both students so that we get some linking between the two sets of data. At the moment, it's really two separate data sets analyzed at the same time. This is what subsetting looks like in the facets output. Table seven is the table of measures. And on the right hand side, it lists which subset each examinee is. In this case, the three examinees in subset one and Betty and Chris, they can be compared with each other, but they can't be compared to the examinees in subset two, David, Edward, and Fred. We don't know, we know Anne is uh, a lower performer than Betty, and we know that David is a lower performer than Edward, but we don't know how Anne relates to David. Sure, there are numbers, but those numbers are in different frames of reference. That we can't compare them directly. The relationship between the two numbers is just accidental because facets always reports numbers. So here there is an example in the facets examples folder called subsets.txt and it's been set up with a standard facets data file so that we can see what's going on here. We've got Raters, examinees, and items. Everybody takes the same items, but there are two subsets raters one and two, rate examinees one, two, three, raters three and four, rate examinees four, five, six, seven. And the two sets of data cannot be directly compared. We can do the same sort of thing in facets using dummy persons. And for the facets which we're not interested, we just use zero in the data. So that particular facet is inactive in the data. In this case, we want to give, we have a dummy person. Facets allows us to enter two data lines for each, per, each or as many data lines as we like, in fact, for each person. So in this case, we're going to add two data lines for a dummy person, a 0101 data line and a 1010. And then we're going to give that person a very small weight. This ties all the items together. And so we now have a situation in which all the items are connected so the persons can be compared. Another option in facets is group anchoring. This isn't supported in WinSteps. It's the same idea. Here we have a set of raters that's become two subsets, Avogadro and Brahi, Cavendish and Davy, and we want to say the two sets of raters are equally lenient on average. So now we're not going to add anything to the data, but we're going to change the element definitions under labels equals. We group anchor. What this means is that the average of a set of raters is going to be set to a value, not the individual rater values, measures, 
but the average of them. So in this case, we're going to make all the averages zero. So we put in a measure of zero for every rater. Then we've got a group number, which is the subset number, so that Avogadro and Barahi are both given a measure of zero in group one. But this is group anchoring, so after the rater definition at the top of labels equals, we put the letter G for group anchoring. And we do the same for the second subset of raters, Cavendish and Davy. Now a nice feature of facets is that each element in labels equals can have multiple definitions as long as they have the same element number and facets will consolidate them. So all we have to do here is to copy and paste this section with Avogadro, Brahe, Cavendish and Davy at the end of the facet one element specifications, add the letter G after the element name and the group anchoring is done for us. On the other hand, we could say it's the examinees that have the same mean abilities. Each group or subset of examinees has the same uh, ability on average, in which case we do exactly the same thing. We group anchor the examinees and facets will do this for us. So this group anchoring is very convenient. We do have to make assumptions though. The data will not tell us. So when we actually run an analysis, we'll be given a warning at the bottom of the analysis screen, which is in the red box right here. Warning, there may be two disjoint subsets. Now, if we're going to be doing group anchoring, facets can help us out. We can then click on the output files menu and on the subset group anchor file option. And facets will output a group anchor file. In other words, it's done the hard work for you. It's taken each element, given it an anchor value of zero and a subset number, which is the group number. So now you can copy and paste the, this information into your facet specification file if you want to either group anchor the judges or group anchor the examinees. You wouldn't do both of them, but you can choose which one you want to do. And the nice thing about facets is in the labels equals section, you can have each person appear several times and facets will consolidate the information. So all you have to do is just take the information it says here uh, Avogadro 01 and just paste that at the end of the labels equals section for facet 1 and also of course put a G for group anchoring after the name of the facet under labels equals. One wrinkle that you must take count of is which facet in the original analysis was non-centered. If you group anchor a facet, you'll have to non-center, in other words, allow to float, another facet. There must always be an unconstrained facet, a non-centered facet in every analysis. So if you don't see it, if, you, if facets will report over-constrained, if there isn't one, and then you can look down your list of facets, see one that's not group anchored or anchored, and then non-center that one. So once subsetting is resolved, this is what the output looks like in table seven. You'll see in the red box that there's little G's reminding us that we've group anchored, and then 
over to the right is the actual group number. Now you can see here what's happened. Avogadro, Avogadro and Braha have equal and opposite measures. Cavendish and Davy have equal and opposite measures. And the overall means, of course, are zero. So now the group anchoring problem is solved. The subset problem is solved. And there's no subset warning message on the right of table seven. So that gives us a quick rundown over the reasons for disjoint and disconnected subsets and a couple of ways of resolving those problems. One is with dummy data and the other is with group anchoring. WinSteps doesn't support group anchoring, but it does support dummy data. Bassett supports both group anchoring and dummy data. Thank you for your participation.